conditions. And we tell them, don't do it. Why not? Because there's a purpose. What is purpose? Why? Because Allah's deen. So in essence, we need to understand what is the purpose and the line essence and theme of Allah's deen. There are so many messengers that you can drive and so many messages and things you can drive. But for as a student of Islam, I think that each time when the messengers came, each time the book was revealed, from Adam to Muhammad, peace and blessing upon all and and Rusul, there were three purposes of deen. Those three things that Allah wanted from us. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Mulk, Ahsan Amal. He wants the best shot from us. None of us is perfect. The only perfection is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because nobody else is perfect. And that's something Allah wants us to close into perfection, giving our best shot, and that's about it. And Allah knows that as a moment, as a moment, we will sometimes derail, we will go off track. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yul ladina amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuhan, surah tahrim, surah number 66. And believers, whenever you go off track, come back to me. So there is built-in essence that yes, we will make mistakes. But Allah wants us to keep on coming back to Him. So the purposes of deen are three. Three things that Allah wanted in His deen. One is tathir al-badal, the purification of body. Tathir al-ruh, purification of soul. And tathir al-ikhlaq, purification of manners. So if you go around every time, any book, you read Torah, you read Bible, you read you know, scrolls, you read you know, in the Psalms of David, any book you read, any message you read, any sirah, any nabi al-usul you read, these are the three things underlying Allah wants purification of your purification of your body, purification of your ruh, spirit, soul, and purification of your manner and dealing with other peoples. These are the three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And this is what the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa revolves around. And that's something we all need to focus. So question when somebody asks, if we have a question, the children have a question, why are we doing it? Son or daughter, does this fit in one of those three things? If it doesn't, then obviously we are not complying with the purpose of Allah's deen. So let's go through quickly. <coughs> Purification of body for Muslim is not required to have a new pieces of cloth on Eid. But it is required whatever you have must be clean. <coughs> so therefore, exterior cleanliness. For Muslim, there is no ritual or worship where you grow your beard all the way along and you grow your mustache, you grow your nails, the hairs are you know, spreading all over the place. You don't take a shower for months and you go somewhere in the jungle and you know, I mean, worship. There are other religions that they do. We respect their faith. That's their, that's their prerogative. But for us, no. For us, whatever you have, clean it. You have a piece of cloth, make sure it's clean. Your mustache must be properly clean. Your beard must be properly trimmed. As your adult person, be ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your entire body is clean any time. I die right now, it's handed to you with Allah's mercy and you. I'm ready to meet my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah wants, exterior cleansiness. Allah wants the clean cut exterior. But then Allah wants what? That here, badal, what goes inside your badal. What you eat matters. Now, unlike our Christian badal, they say it doesn't matter what you eat. Because Paul said that, you know, it doesn't matter what goes in. Now, for Muslim, it does matter what goes in. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so many times in the Quran. Kuru halal and tayyiban. Don't eat only halal, permissible. But halal and tayyiban, pure. Which means it has to go in pure. So your body exterior is pure, it's the best, but interior must be in line as well. So halal doesn't mean, brother, I want to have a chicken, bismillah, Allah, but I want to do zabiha myself. Fine, that's a good idea, mashallah. But the question is not for this, bismillah, Allah, the question is that how did you get that money to get to the slaughterhouse? How did you earn that money? Was it really rightful your money? Did you cheat somebody? Did you know, defame somebody? Did you steal from somebody? Did you overbill somebody? How did you get that money? And once you get the chicken, that doesn't mean Bismillah Allah Akbar. Yes, it is permissible to eat that Bismillah Allah Akbar. But it's not tayyam. Halal and tayyiban. So it does matter what goes in. And there's a joke, you know, Muslim brother, we have, we're so strict. Alhamdulillah, this is good. When it comes to our dietary, we want completely zabiha. And then I have so people go and get the zabiha chicken on the way back. They buy alcohol, and then they sit down and eat, and drink alcohol, and then they burp, <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Our deen is not. Our 
idea is entirely the package deal, the whole thing. It's not pick and choose like Yahud. This is okay, so about two weeks ago, I met a rabbi in an interfaith program, and he said, a person who does not believe in God as one still can be a Jew. Shocked me. But wait, wait a second, whoa, whoa. say it again? Yes. A person who does not be, believe in the unity of God as one God, he can still be a Jew. I didn't believe it. I went to another rabbi and asked him the same question. He yes, you can. How does it work? Well, there are thousands of laws in a rabbinic school of thought. You follow some of them, you still are a Jew. For us, it doesn't work. It's not some of. It's all of. It is whole being is not a ritual. It's a package deal. So everything we do is a deen. Ali radiallahu ta'ala was asked, how do you practice your deen? He said 24-7. How do you do that? Concept that you and I have, oh, you fast all day? And you do the hajjah all night? That's what we have, right? That's how deen is. He said, no, 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 no. Whatever I do, I think and read, is this in the Quran? Is this a sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If it's not there, I stop doing it. That's the deen. If it's there, I start implementing. That's the deen. Brother and sister, sister, what a beautiful deen from restroom, going inside restroom, how to do ablution and use a restroom, to all the way how to commit a conduct, conduct a war, a consummation with your spouse. Every single thing is being documented, practically done, well preserved in our deen. Name anything. There's a sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sunnah of Sahaba, sunnah of Aima. There's a continuous ijtihad, ulmar, consensus, ijmar, qiyas, beautiful deen. Beautiful deen, mashallah. But we need to have a whole package deal. So what goes in, it does matter. So now it's my own exterior, my own interior. Beautiful thing. But that's just between me and Allah. I get up in tahajjud, I pray so much. Nobody knows. But the question is that what Allah wants next is the ruh, the spirit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so many places in the Quran, in Surah Sa'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sabbaytuhu wa nafaktu bihe ruhi. I have put him, human being, in good shape, and then I have put my spirit. Spirit, not in the concept of our Christian brother and sister, the spirit of Jesus alayhi salam. No. For us, the spirit is different. Ruh al-Ameen, Jibreel alayhi salam. For us, the spirit doesn't mean the ruh from Allah. This something came, nafaktu, I put. This came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has to be satisfied only when you're in line with Allah. So what? When you're remembering Allah, this thing is being rebooted, it's being recharged. That ruh is direct connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pray, you remember Allah, you do charity work. This is also purification. And that connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah's zikr is the one who's giving satisfaction to your khulub, to your heart, to your chest, to your ruh. So Allah is programmed for alhamaha, khuduraha, wa taqwa. Allah programmed both things, but we are the one who have to monitor and maintain the right path. That's a beautiful thing for us. But the question is that, sure, I have beautiful room, I have beautiful exterior interior, I pray, so what? This is me. Allah could have placed me somewhere in the basement. Allah could have placed me somewhere in the jungle. Allah could have put, put me somewhere in the masjid all my life. And that's what my deen is required. Allah could have made me bird. Don't, uh, all other animals also do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's the purpose of me as a human being? Beautiful shape. Ahsan al taqween. That comes to the third part, brother and sister. That is the ultimate, most important part. And that is taqseer al ikhlaq. Manners and conduct. The purification of your manners. That's why the sharia, that's why the deen was there. That's why it is here. That came from Adam al Islam to Muhammad to Tathir al the manners, the conduct. That's something we need to focus. But let me go back a little bit. The ruh, my ruh, my exterior, between me and Allah, right? But for Muslim, first of all, I should remind for myself and all of us, we focus so much. So much on the first part, the exterior, that we forget the second, and we forget the third. It was Tathirul Badan, Tathirul Ruh, Tathirul Ikhlaq. We focus on Badan so much that we make judgment call. Many of you are uncomfortable that I'm really disclosed. I don't have the Raya, I don't have the other thing, why not? Right? Was that Sunnah Muhammad 
did Muhammad Sallallahu wear that? Did he wear what exactly we do with the gold spats and things? Did he have just exactly his kofi? Brother and sister, let's get out of this. With respect to not the Nabi Sallallahu but there's more important than Nabi Sallallahu That's the Mojiza. I ran and alive to the day of judgment. In the Nahnu Nazzal Nazikra wa Nazzal Rahula Hafizun, the Quran, the Quran says, La ta da kuluba dilla ladina amunu. Don't give me a heart that I have a bad feeling for others. And we don't. It just goes on stereo so much to the point that, you know, with dress code, define who you are. Not who you are as a person or human being, which is the whole thing in Nas, the mankind. No. It reflects for us our perception and our training and our training and our teaching from the school, from Bodhi all the way, which school of thought you belong to based on your dress code. How pathetic. How sick this is. It's a sickening that by having certain kind of kufi or hat, having certain kind of abaya, certain kind of dress code, doesn't only tell us it's a Muslim. It tells us which school of thought the person belongs to. Allah Akbar. When Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought being so simple, not a single incident out of 23 years of his life, and I don't know about the Sahaba, I can challenge with a clear heart. I don't think it's in 30 years of Sahabas, the companion, the the Khulfa Rashidin's time, anytime somebody accepted Islam, say, I don't accept Islam, they say, go home and change your dress. I don't think so. I really don't think so. So therefore, this exterior that we point a finger at each other, this is a haram, this is a haram, this is a bidah, this is a, whoa, stop it. It's not the only thing Allah wanted. And Allah wants something that is interior. فَالْحَامَهَا فَجُورَهَا تَقْوَى Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, where is taqwa? هَاوْنَا تَقْوَى Allah SWT wants what? What the Quran says first, very first ayah? Ayy Allah mim zalik al kitabu? Nobody knows what that means, right? Zalik al kitabu la hai bafi. There's no doubt in this book, right? It's talking about book. So what? What is this book about? Hodan lil muttaqeen. Hadaya for those who have taqwa. What is taqwa? Nobody knows. Nobody knows why there is something in your heart. Something between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we just simply focus on the pillar of Islam. Five pillars. The very first thing is the shahada. Many of our blessed, alhamdulillah, we took shahada when we were born. Many of the, our other brothers and sisters are more blessed than us that they took later on the earliest sins of forgiven. Allahu Akbar. But whenever you take shahada, there are two parties. Either your parents are doing it, Imam Khatib, somebody is doing it, right? You do salat, you're making wudu, somebody's watching you. You're praying in jamaat, somebody's watching you, right? When it comes to zakat, there's always a recipient. There's two people, right? One giver, one taker, right? When it comes to high, three million people are watching. More than that, whole world. But Allah said, all those are can, the pillars are great, mashallah. Angels, here's a book, here's a menu of how you give them deeds and rewards, fine. But when it comes to psalm, a fasting, when it comes to fasting, it's for me and I will give reward. Why? 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 Because this is purely done for me. Nobody else was watching. Nobody else is there as a recipient. Nobody knows it's happening or not. Other pillars, everybody can find out what's going on. But this is completely for me. Only me and my person knows. My object knows. That's it. Nobody knows. So therefore, it's purely for me. It's interior. The spirit, the rule is in line with me. I am the one who's going to write. What to write? You angels don't even know what to write. For. So this is something directly between me and Allah. That's what Allah wants. But we come up with a judgment for exterior so much that we come to the point that we say this is a kafir, murtad, mushrik, jahannam, wajib al qatl. And brother and sister, not only the poison that was spirit, sp uh, spewed from the member of Rasulullah, but we also take it to the next level and we do fulfill those fatwas, and we do kill each other at the name of Islam. Right now, as you and I speak here, by the time we finish this khutbah, next 10 minutes, go home and check, Google it. Call your own so-called Muslim countries back home, and find out somewhere somebody died at the name of Islam, and both sides were Muslim, and both sides were saying, Ashhadu Allah, ilaha illallah, takbir, Allahu Akbar, ya Muhammad, Rasulullah, 
What's going on? Why? It's a it's minor judgment call. This is bid'a, this is haram, this is kufr, this is shirk, Allah hakmat. And then slowly, slowly, it's been legitimized from the member of Rasulullah and then comes to the power and this alliance. It's a disaster and deadliest alliance. We are blessed to name anything when it comes to the material world. As a blessed as a Muslim ummah because Allah gave us guidance and deen. Alhamdulillah. But as a materialistic approach, name anything that Muslim countries don't have. Name anything. Anything you name. Allah has blessed us. One of the most, the hottest commodity in the world is oil. 77% of world oil. The recent war has been fought based on because of the oil. The oil is controlled by 77% Muslim Ummah controls them. Why are we still suffering? Because it's judgment cause. This judgment call makes it arise, fatwas, power, done. Explosive material. It's something we need to go back and retrieve. When we go back to the purpose and essence of deen, which is the teal, which is purification of the things, then we can understand. So I have two purification, exterior and my ruh. Not enough. Not enough. Why not enough? Let me tell you this. Authentic hadith. I mentioned it to you in the last one as well. But again, I want to remind myself and all of us that we saw Allah is recorded in Muslim. It's also recorded in the Sayyidah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked his companion, Aqadun Amal Muflis, do you know who is bankrupt? Who is bankrupt? Talu, Ya Rasulullah. They said, Oh Allah, Oh Rasulullah, we know who. Fina Ma'alahu Dirm Wala Mata. Among us, a Muflis, what? Who doesn't have money, doesn't have assets. That's what the companions answer. Prophet asking, who is the bankrupt? Who is the mufless? <coughs> and Sahaba said, our interpretation among us, the mufless, the bankrupt, is who does not have what? Dirham, walamata. Does not have dirham, doesn't have money, dollar, pound, dinar, and does not have any asset. Right? Simple answer, isn't it? But Muhammad saw some second, the mufless amil ummati, yati yom al kayama, be salatin, be zakatin, wa siyamin. From my ummah, indeed, the mufless, the bankrupt, the suffering, the most, you know, unfortunate person is the one who will come on the day of judgment, be salatin with his salat. But this Muslim brother was in the masjid. He's the imam. He was there all the time. I'm not demeaning anybody who prays that. Mashallah, we all need to do that. But this is that's different topic. It's different importance. But in this context, the person is here in salat every time. He gives money to the masjid. Masjid donates on his behalf. And we say, MashaAllah, this brother is doing great. What be what? Be siyamin. He's fasting, remember? But fasting was not from Allah. Fasting was some other reason. Allah said, Muhammad said, come with siyam, come with salat, come with zakat. Guess what happened then? That hadith ends. That you want to cut shatama haza, akala malo haza, dama, sabaka dama. He you know, killed somebody, he hurt somebody's feelings, he did give up for somebody, all those bad things. And when we use the hasanatu, then his hasana, his good deeds, are going to be start giving to those people. What, ha what happened? When his deeds finish before he has to pass on all the debts, remember salat, remember zakat, remember hajj? In this dunya, we say, yes, slam dunk, the brother, mashallah. For us, yeah, mashallah, right? We kind of will focus on exterior. We focus on something exterior. But Allah does not only look at exterior, Allah look at interior. In the Allah knows your heart, Allah knows your deeds, Allah knows your chest. That's what Allah wanted. But we'll focus on exterior. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, alayhi, offensa khataya, min khataya hum, alayhi. Other people's bad deeds will be taken in crushed upon him and loaded him and thrown at him. And then what happened? He is thrown in Jahannam with those bad deeds. Be salatin, be zakatin, be siyamin. Auzu billah, may Allah protect us. Brothers and sisters, this is exterior. We need to go away from exterior. Deen is for interior. And interior to the next level, how we deal with each other. That is the ultimate test. Why this person is in Jahannam? <coughs> because he didn't deal properly with other people. He just focused on the first two parts, it didn't work out. 
The last part of the most important. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told, so lady is very righteous. She just sold scars, very good. But she's bad to neighbor. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said she's in Jahannam. What? She's in Jahannam. It's not nice to neighbor. Hadith does not tell the neighbor is gay, lesbian, I'm from Egypt, from Pakistan, a Sunni, a Wahhabi, with a beer, with a hawaii. It doesn't say she's a neighbor. Yes, neighbor was she was bad to neighbor. Psalms of Allah, God, done. She's in Jahannam. My sister, this third part is very important. And that's what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was asked. Point blank question by Sahaba. Ya Rasulullah, why did you come? We know the purpose of being. You are your Allah. Follow the messenger of that time, follow the book of that time, meet Allah, and be responsible for your deeds. Simple as being. That's what Islam is. That's what Allah saying that being Allah is Islam. Islam from Adam to Muhammad, the same message. So why did you come? Beautiful question, isn't it? Because if we know Adam did say those three things, uh, you know, no higher, all the other uh, Ambiya did, then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi why did you come? His answer was what? His answer was, I came to finalize, fulfill the obligation of best to man or best akhlaq. That was the ultimate answer, brother and sister. That's what we are lacking, brother and sister. That's something we need to focus, brother and sister. We say we need to say, halal, bismillah, Allah, Akbar. But we love eating each other's meat. We love eating, eating each other alive and dead. We say, how? Oh, no, we don't. Really, you don't? Read Surah al Surah number 49, I believe, verse number 12. La yaktab, don't backbite. Ayyuhibu ahadukum. Ayyakul ata'a. Any one of whom you love to eat your brother's dead meat? La yakta, don't backbite. This is Quran, it's not a folk story. Would you love to eat your brother's dead meat when a person dies? Would you like to eat them? Don't, I don't think so. But we do constantly, we do eat. Why? Because what we talk. We talk for somebody who's not present. We say things that person would never like it. Oh, Ali is saying over something. Let's say Ali is not here. Say the man, Ali is not here. But you know what? He smiles. Ali is a nice guy, but sometimes loud. Maybe he's right. Maybe Ali is loud. But guess what? Muhammad said, this is still riba. Because if Ali was present and you would say that, Ali wouldn't like it. Aisha did say the same thing to Muhammad said, Safiya is Muhammad said, this is riba. Don't do it. Brothers and sisters, how many times would we talk? I can assure you, I can guarantee you more than five minutes your conversation will not last without doing riba. What are you going to ask? brother? How are you? How's family? How's job going? What are you going to talk? You have to talk about somebody who's not present. And that's the riba. That's what we're eating every day. But we don't realize we have to have Bismillah Allah for brother. It doesn't work. It's a practice here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom, vision, to understand the essence of deen. The purpose of that deen was what the fear of badan purification of experience in here. May Allah give us wisdom to understand that the fear of rumu, the purification of heart, and we align our heart with the badr, the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but remembering everything we do is this in line with Allah's command. And the last thing, may Allah give us wisdom and vision and strength to come back to the pure essence and beauty of being, which is ikhlaq, to teach each other as a best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love this person. Why? Because my beloved Allah has created this person. I love this masjid. I love this humanity. I love this country. I love this car. I love every creation. Why? Because Allah has created in his own head. I love Allah, so I love Allah's creation. That's, brothers and sisters, that's what the religion is all about. Allah has placed us, created us, some of them with the wealth, some of them without wealth, with a test. Those who have it, those who don't have it. But I love Allah, therefore whatever Allah created, I love Allah's creation. Oh brother, that person doesn't have good attire. That person doesn't have good belief. If you know that person doesn't have good belief, then it's incumbent upon you. Tell them politely and nicely. If you're a doctor and you're an oncologist and you know they have shot in front of your door and you're going into visiting the patient and you know this person's going to die. You say, well, I'm not going in. It's going to die. So what? Do you? I don't think so. So if you think somebody's wrong, their archives are wrong because you are making judgment call or you have a knowledge, Allah Akbar, it's up to you between you and Allah. I wouldn't take that far. But if you think the person has a cause uh, wrong, then you are the doctor. You know the cure. Then walk in that room and slowly give the good news. Don't give the bad news. 
كان بس بدي احسن لما محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بدي يسلم وبروح من تو اذر سبيس تو اذر نيشن سيل بشر ولا تنصروا جيف ا جود نيوز دونت جيف باد نيوز ذا جود نيوز براذر اي ونت بي يور فريند كم تو ماي هاوس وي غن ايت توجذر وي غن واك توجذر اند سلولي سلولي بيكوز وات ديد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم دو فالي فيرست ثينج ان سي ايترا كم باك اند دو ات بيفور تو ذات ستيت ذا فالي فيرست ثينج ديد يو بيلد ذا كريديبيليتي سو دو يو نو هو اي ام Do you know who I am? So yeah, we do. You sure? Yes, we do. Really, really sure? Yes, we do. Well, let me tell you this. If I tell you there's an army behind me and they're coming attacking you, would you believe it? Oh yes, sir. We do. So the deal after the deal after the deal and reference it is yes, you do know me, right? I have no issue with my credibility. No, I'm going to tell you this is the message. That credibility is lacking. We just want somebody to look at them. Or Abu Bakr, Omar, and Osman and Ali within a night. But yet you and I want to stay Abu Jahal. It will never work. We need to become Abu Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman, and Ali first. Then we can have other companions. For example, this person needs to become Abu Bakr. The she, the sister needs to become Fatima. But we we'll still stay Abu Jahal. That will never work. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us wisdom, vision, strength to understand His Deen, act upon it, and be humble, and then can live over the Hikmah. إن الله ملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. الحمد لله الحمد لله الأحد الأحد والسمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا ولا أحد. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wa ala alihi tawhidin wa mabad. My brothers and sisters, it's a reminder for all of us. Doesn't matter how far you go, doesn't matter how best you are. And I believe it was uh, Alexander the Great. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure of Islam or history but he's been part of Islam as well. He said leave my hands out when I leave, right? So he was the one who said cuz people think I come from a lot. But leave my head out is empty. We have a message that our own masjid at home. <coughs> our Muslim brother Shaib, his father passed away this week. May Allah give him jannah for those. May Allah give Allah Rahim, the people and families left behind. Sabr Jamil. May Allah make it all out in offspring. As a little jaya for him. Brother and sister, may Allah give us wisdom and reflection from this that we are prepared for all time. May Allah give us wisdom that we forgive any and everybody that we hurt. And, and, uh, and anybody that hurt over to me. In the tongue of Allah, give those people wisdom and vision and strength and rahmah in their heart that they forgive us. And whosoever I forget, uh, heard and you heard, may Allah, we forgive all of them in the tongue of Allah, merciful. You forgive us. So brother and sister, there will be dua. Keep the person in your dua, those who pass away. We have no beef with any human being, especially those Muslims who pass away. May Allah give them Jannah for those. Allah, Martha, Amin, Surma, Amin. Those who are alive, may Allah guide us all and love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are coming after, may Allah make salatai jariyah for all of us. May Allah accept our effort. May Allah open our heart and chest for the fahm of Quran, for the fahm of deen, and to love mankind, to love the humanity, and love especially Muslim ummah, the family. Amin, summa, amin, ya Rabbul Alameen. Rabbana adina fi dunya, salatun wa fil akhirati, salatun wa adina da bin naal. Rabbana adlamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa taghfirna lana kunna lana minal khasirin. Allah minin nasaluka minal khayri kulli hi wa nauzu bika bil shurri kulli hi. Amin, summa, amin, ya Rabbul Alameen. Akhiru salam.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 